country fighting for America's heartland. President Trump set to sign a new farm bill legislation today. It will be the first time since 1990 that a new farm bill will be passed in the same year it was for first introduced. The $867 billion bipartisan legislation will provide aid for farmers hurt by national, natural disasters and the ongoing trade dispute with China. Joining me right now is U.S. Agricultural Secretary and former Georgia Governor Sonny Perdue. Secretary, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. Glad to be with you. First, talk, talk to us about the farm bill. What's most important? What do we need to understand most about this? Well, I think, again, this gives a peace of mind to our producers here who have to make plans for 2019 regarding their cropping history. So it's an evolutionary bill. It's good. It was a good bipartisan vote in Congress. And uh, while we didn't get everything that we had hoped to get in the bill, it's a, a very stable bill for agriculture and for the consumers as well. Yeah, but I want to go back to the tariffs here because there's a lot of debate yeah. around the president's tariffs, and we know that farmers took a hit as a result. That's why we, we see this bailout. And now some people are saying, well, there's the farmers needing a bailout. What about the, the, the companies that use steel and aluminum? What about the media industry? What about the banking industry? I mean, are we going to start being forced to give bailouts because of the president's tariffs? Well, I think, again, the farmers were directly hit. These were the major customers that uh, charged the retaliatory tariffs here. Uh, they could not plan for that in the spring. And uh, certainly, I think they're entitled to it. And the president fulfilled his commitment to do that. So, no, I don't think there's nothing planned for 2019 regarding uh, what your so-called bailout there. But I think it's entirely appropriate for 2018 when they saw markets disappear. Secretary, what about just making the tariffs disappear? Uh, we'd love to do that. These tariffs are not uh, induced by the U.S. These are retaliatory tariffs uh, from China primarily based on bad behavior that the president is trying to uh, get their attention by. And I think he is. Well, they are retaliatory tariffs because the president instituted tariffs on them. Well, that is true, but uh, <laughs> certainly the retaliatory tariffs have nothing to do with agriculture. These farmers were caught uh, unawares. They planted their crops and uh, look forward to selling them to these customers, and uh, uh, that's how that all came about. We'd love for the tariffs to go away. I guess what I'm saying is the tariffs have been, you know, really this hot-button issue, and it goes beyond just the farm belt. You know, people are seeing uh, margins get squeezed, companies, because of the cost of the retaliatory tariffs, which come as a result of the president putting those tariffs on steel and aluminum. Is there any conversation happening now that the president will back off or reverse these tariffs, given the fact that it does appear that they are impacting the business climate? Uncertainty. Companies are now sitting on cash again, uncertain of what these tariffs are going to lead to. Maria, you of all people know that uh, China has not played fair mm -hmm. for a number of years. The, the transfer, That's true. the unfair transfer of intellectual property by theft, by forced transfer, uh, this is the president's had the courage to call that out. Yeah. Yes, there will be some temporary pain in agriculture and the economy, but he's also gotten China's attention, and we are in discussions with them right now about how we can resolve this issue. But there's got to be structural, uh, fundamental reform from China in dealing in world trade. Yeah, it's a fair point, sir. I, I totally understand what you're saying in yeah. terms of China. Um, yeah. But these issues are so big. The theft of IP, the forced transfer of technology, the fact that they're unwilling to open up their markets. And I haven't even gotten to espionage yet. That's a whole nother ball of wax. So does the president really believe that he's going to be able to change this kind of behavior with tariffs? I think the president does believe that, and I okay. think it is having some effect. We see China's markets down 33 yeah, percent this that's year. True. So. That's a good point. Let me ask yeah. you this, sir. The, this legislation is also removing hemp from the Controlled Substances Act, yeah. legalizing hemp production. This provision was championed by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. What impact is this having on your constituents? Well, again, uh, obviously, if it's a profitable crop for agriculture, then they will participate. They indicate there are many multiple industrial uses for hemp. This is an industrial use product medicinally as well as other products, and we look forward to developing markets for it. If it's a profitable crop, agriculture needs uh, new products. We're so productive in soybeans and corn, we're looking for markets worldwide now uh, to sell those. But if this is a product that can be utilized throughout the economy, it'd be good for agriculture and good for the economy. What about this food stamp reform? The Agriculture yeah. Department proposing that states restrict food stamp waivers to areas where the unemployment rate exceeds 7%. The national unemployment rate currently stands at 3.7%.
what are you hoping to achieve? Just lessen the pressure on those high employment, uh, unemployment states? Well, we're hoping to facilitate people back into the workplace. During the Great Recession, obviously, Americans are generous. They're compassionate. We had waivers. This goes back to the integrity of the 1996 bill, where President Bill Clinton says there, this is a second chance, not a way of life. And unfortunately, it's become a way of life for some people who got in, needed, in the need during the Great Recession, but have not gotten back into the workplace. When you have more jobs than people, America needs workers. And this is to help facilitate them back to the dignity of work. What could you tell us in terms of prices, uh, Secretary? You know, we've been watching for inflation. We haven't certainly seen any really inflation on the uh, producer level or on the consumer level. But there is conversation out there in the C-suite that margins are getting squeezed because input costs are going up. What are you seeing? I think that's true in agriculture as well. We do see input costs and margins are squeezed. In fact, probably negative uh, in many crops today. And that puts a lot of duress and stress over uh, working capital as well as equity in the agricultural community. That's why the market facilitation program was so important uh, to agriculture this year. So, so how worried are you about that? I mean, are, has it gotten to an extent where you would be worried about prices moving too fast, uh, too high? We're not there yet. Obviously, we're not back to the uh, dire circumstances we saw in the early 80s, although we are seeing working capital being depleted. We're seeing uh, debt to asset ratios uh, increasing, and uh, we're seeing uh, uh, difficulty in profitability there. And that's the, the sustainability of agriculture depends on being profitable, just like any other business. So I don't think that we, we're seeing input rising, and that's, again, squeezing margins. So we have to be concerned. If this trend continues, we've got to be, uh, we will become alarmed. So this impact of the farm bill, how significant will it be? Tell us the practical impact that you're expecting. Well, it's huge, obviously, from an emotional standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, but this provides the peace of mind for our farmers for the safety net. Farming is a very risky business, and most of us know that. They, by faith, put that seed in the ground every spring, hoping for a good crop. We've got rain, we've got hail, we've got hurricanes, we've got floods, all those kinds of things, got droughts, all those sort of things. So farming is a risky business. This farm bill provides a safety net for those things that happen when people uh, cannot help it. Uh, and they've done well, but things happen to that. This is a safety net for prices and production uh, to support that. I think good for ag economy is good for national economy. Uh, food security is good for national security. Well, for sure. Secretary, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you, Maria. We Thank so appreciate you. your time. Secretary Sonny Perdue will be watching.